okay uh good evening guys uh, this is shriram i'm from index uh, so i am a principal engineer at index been here for 5 years uh, mostly worked on a major set of problems at index and uh, kind of working on machine learning problems right now uh if if i have to kind of put in uh, context what index does uh, index deals with uh, product collecting product information and kind of uh, structuring it and providing it to end users so uh, we kind of crawl the web uh, for product information uh, e-commerce stores and other affiliate information about products uh, structure them and then kind of uh, store it in our database which is a uh, index and then uh, we serve it to end users uh, at a high level index deals with i mean right now we have anywhere close to 900 to a 100 million to a billion product uh, records uh, we have close to 2 billion offers which spans across 50000 plus brands and uh, 7000 plus categories so uh, that's the scale of problem that we deal with um, and uh, uh, i'm i'm going to just briefly talk about what the pipeline looks like for us uh, because i need to kind of set this context so that we we get into uh, why we build some of this stuff uh, which we call such so uh, uh, the pipeline is at a high level we, we kind of crawl html pages from the web Uh, and then we have uh, a series of uh, algorithms which involve uh, processing this unstructured html content is it audible yeah uh, unstructured html content and then uh, processing it uh, through the pipeline where we kind of stamp uh, each product with a category uh, we kind of identify the brand of the product using uh, some of uh, machine learning techniques and then we also kind of try to try to go deeper into the product and understand uh, what the product is talking about like more attributes about the product uh, and so on and so forth uh so uh, that's that's at a high level what uh, we do with respect to pipeline now uh, if you look at the pipeline uh, there are uh, i mean of course throughout the pipeline some of the common uh, tenets that we have are scale we just cannot deal with uh, anything less than terabytes a few terabytes of data so that's a given for us and uh, we also need to uh, we also need to have a uh, 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 check on latency in terms of how we process and uh, respond to user queries and in the user queries are mostly internal right so uh, uh, what we end up having is we end up having a few indices uh, a bunch of indices across the pipeline to kind of serve some of our requests uh, um, and that's why i kind of uh, put on a couple of uh, databases across uh, a few significant places in the pipeline uh, so some of the common uh, requirements so to say uh, from a technical angle uh, for these uh, systems are i'm talking about both the, both the processing as well as the storage right some of the common properties that that uh, we need are uh, we need to handle scale uh, hundreds of terabytes of data uh, we also need to be fault tolerant uh, because uh, we cannot house everything on one box we are naturally distributed but that also means we need to be fault tolerant and on top of this uh, uh, i mean we have kind of uh, tried multiple things and we have realized that uh, operations in production is very very critical to kind of managing uh, systems right and and delivering a delightful user experience so uh, for us ease of operations is of utmost importance uh, so given these right uh, uh, we we kind of went through our own um, a story of finding the sweet spot for us but i'm going to kind of take a step back and then see how generally a problem like this is being approached um, outside anywhere right or how traditionally we have tried to address this problem from from, from building in terms of building software uh so i mean you kind of traditionally slap this system into multiple tiers kind of compartmentalize your problems and then say that i'm going to kind of manage the application tier separately from the web tier and then i'm going to have uh, an orm or something like that that's going to sit on the application tier and talk to my database which is going to store information and so on and so forth so uh, and more often than not we are very successful with scaling our web tier and an application tier but uh, i mean we know the problem always goes back to the place where we touch the disk or our data store right so uh, and 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 from the morning there has been substantial uh, content that has been provided to support this in the sense that we know that uh, managing data at scale is very very hard and it's and building distributed systems is also very hard so uh, so what we are essentially trying to solve at index and and of course at, across a lot of places is trying to uh, scale data systems which is to scale storage as well as to scale compute right uh with this context right uh, let's 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 kind of uh, see this how the traditional system is going to be like uh, benefited with the set of technologies that we have got in the last 10 years the rise of key value stores have actually taken um, away a lot of the problems that the traditional data stores uh, have uh, have have given us i mean some of the pain points uh, some of the bottlenecks that we have had with the traditional databases have been kind of uh, taken out of context completely by these distributed systems but uh, in, in previous talk on how to pick a database he clearly pointed out saying that 
uh, you need to know whether you want to push your computation onto the applications or you want to leave it with the database, right? So some of these calls were trying to force fit uh, a relational model into a key value store or trying to force fit a key value store into a relational model is not going to help. So uh, when, we, when we kind of scale these applications uh, with distributed data stores, uh, more than, I mean one part is a design part where we kind of uh, come up with different data stores to fit our needs. The other part is actually the place where uh, we start seeing something called as latency, right? So, uh, uh, and this latency starts to kind of become the biggest monster that you end up dealing with. Um, I mean, if you're using HBase, Cassandra, or any other data store at the back, I, I'm sure almost all of you have managed HBase and Cassandra who have spent a few weeks, nights, burning midnight oil trying to squeeze the hell out of the GC, right? I mean, there is no doubt on that. So you would end up spending a lot of time trying to tweak uh, uh, some of these settings to ensure that your latency between your application and the, the data store is within the limits, permissible, permissible limits, right? So that is, that is a problem that is not going away. And as you scale, throw more data at these systems, this problem is only getting bigger, right? So what we thought is, uh, why, not, why not take it head on and try to solve it to some degree, right? So, uh, so one of the things that, that we tried is, uh, can we co-locate our compute and the data, right? So if I can co-locate compute and data, then I'm actually killing some part of latency. Of course, uh, uh, because the nature of problem itself is uh, killing its scale, I'm not, I'm not able to, I, I won't be able to hold the entire data set in one box. Naturally, what that means is my latency is only reduced to that portion where there is data locality. But that's still better than having nothing, right? So, uh, so this idea of co-locating compute and data, what that, uh, what that means is uh, uh, we are uh, moving away from this concept of just a data store to a data service, uh, which is a little bit more intelligent than a data store which doesn't know how to organize your data and keep it for indexes for the matter, uh, and so on and so forth, right? So, uh, so building this data service, I mean, it seems to solve some of these problems for you, but when you actually go about doing it, uh, there is a lot of complexity that is involved because just building a distributed system uh, right out of the box from scratch is not easy and anyone what they solve will vouch for it, right? So uh, one of the things that we learned is that uh, we need to take this and solve this problem head on, but not every application writer cannot be solving this problem every time, right? So, uh, so we kind of understood that we need, we need some middle ground for this. Uh, so we kind of understood that there is a data service component that is needed and we tried to find something in the open source world that kind of fits our, our need. Uh, so, how many of you here have used HBase? A large portion of you. And how many of you here have known of coprocessors? Okay, very few. Okay, cool. So, uh, what what I want is something like this. I want a data and compute to be co-located, and coprocessors fits the bill exactly. I don't need to look outside uh, for anything. I have coprocessors which are responsible for, which is basically a unit of processing that is going to lie alongside the shard. Any operation that happens on the shard, the processor is going to be triggered and whatever action I need to perform there, I can get it done. But uh, the problem is, um, co-process in HBase is an afterthought. Uh, whether we like it or not, it is an afterthought. It is not designed from the ground up. Because uh, think about this, right? I want to actually release a new version of the application and my data store is actually shared data store. Uh, when, I'm, when I'm running a 100 node HBase cluster and when I have to share this data store with a couple of uh, applications, what kind of call do I take on uh, the core process that is running there? Should I, uh, should I throw in a new jar or should I have an application upgrade or should I have a database upgrade, I mean, data store upgrade, what do I do there, right? So these things are not very well defined. Plus uh, the semantics around core processors are not really well understood in terms of failures and in terms of upgrades. So uh, while, while there is a little bit of a provision for you, uh, the, the, the entire design is not set up in such a way that you are going to be able to use it for your production use cases where uh, some of your business critical uh, uh, logic or your uh, code needs to lie there, right? So uh, now with this kind of setting and with no other option, right, we kind of realize that applications need to own scaling, uh, developers need to be uh, uh, aware of how to handle scale, uh, that's, that's, the, that's the bare bones of uh, the reality. Now how do we solve this so that uh, it's, it's easier for all of us, right? So. Uh, we kind of debated a lot, we tried uh, some of this stuff and we realized that we couldn't, uh, we couldn't make use of whatever was available and then uh, we kind of moved on to something that, uh, that helped us uh, build our own stuff. Along the way we realized that uh, taking a call on off the shelf versus in-house involves a bunch of parameters 
and more often than not it's it's a question of your expertise and and your need is there a real need for you to build something and can kind of manage it versus using something that's already available right and uh, on top of this given that we are a startup uh, we are kind of extremely prudent about cost if there is a way for us to actually um, shave down our cluster from 20 nodes to 5 nodes if i'm able to do that with uh, let's say a couple of people working on it for a month or two i would rather do that because uh, the cost of managing an external infra i mean a bigger infrastructure and constant attention towards it is lot more in the longer run than just solving the problem head on right so uh, so with this with this kind of uh, setting for us what we realized is um, uh, most of the problems that we are dealing with with respect to distribution uh, lie into some one of these buckets right so uh, essentially for uh, for you to build a distributed system um, you uh, you need to solve or you need to have a hold of these problems uh, you need to have an idea of um, uh, how to establish communication between two machines i mean how do two machines talk to each other what is the protocol that i'm going to have for this cluster uh, am i going to talk http tcp or some custom protocol how am i going to do that right that's that's a number one problem that you need to solve uh, on top of that uh, you also need to understand who are all the guys that are part of the cluster so if i'm going to bring up 10 nodes i need to know who's in the cluster right now who's going out uh, who's newly added what data is there in what node and a bunch of metadata around around these guys and and if i have a cluster of 5 or 10 nodes then uh, naturally the idea is to uh, store partitions of the data across these nodes right so what is the strategy for me to partition data technically it's called sharding so what how do you apply the sharding and how do you apply your uh, uh how do you apply your queries in such a way that uh, these systems identify the right shard for your query it could be just one node or multiple nodes depending on how much data it spans across your queries but how do you really like zero in on a bunch of nodes to actually uh, get get your work done uh, on top of this um having a distributed system without replication is pointless um, you're basically shooting yourself in the foot uh, by by not having replication uh, and managing uh, data properly so a replication is a must for us to actually do anything uh, in a distributed world right so uh, with this context right i mean uh, we kind of understood that these are the primitives so to say uh, that that we need to address um, and uh, and and in the last 3 uh, to 4 years we kind of uh, built two systems that are in production uh, and we kind of built uh, distributed systems from scratch these are very simple uh, master slave architectures that we kind of understood and built from scratch and they are in production and as part of the learning from that we realized that we could pull out these <coughs> some of these common primitives as abstractions and see if we can reuse them for uh, for building newer systems from ground up right at the same time i was also uh, me and ashwant uh, who is the co-author of this uh, project we kind of stumbled upon something called as ring pop from uber uh, which kind of uh, handled some of this stuff uh, for node and go <coughs> sorry so uh, thus uh, kind of kind of we kind of uh, uh, brought in suchi and then we started hacking on it it was just a start off as a, any other open source project we spent a couple of weekends on it uh, trying to uh, get our hands together and then uh, come up with the basic primitives set up the interfaces for it and then try to see how to how to uh, go about uh, building this so what does suchi provide you as an application developer if you ask me what is suchi providing you right it provides you basic uh, blocks to establish communication between the nodes in your cluster it helps you to uh, pick up a routing strategy something that we have defined or if you want to define your new routing strategy you can kind of uh, write it based on interface and then um, contribute it back uh, you you also get uh, different modes of replication and uh, you could choose to have different ways in which you can set up your membership uh, you could have a gossip based membership or you can have a static membership where you predefine the set of nodes that are going to be part of the cluster right so uh, so these are the basic primitives that uh, we thought would be essential to get any simple distributed system from ground up and uh, we kind of uh, uh, went with it right so uh, let's let's take each of these primitives and then go a little bit uh, deeper into it to see what kind of things are supported uh, out of the box right now so uh, as far as communication goes we kind of support two uh, major paradigms one is the handle of our paradigm which says that any request that i get Uh, i need to know whether i should be handling the request or i should be offloading to someone else who is responsible for that uh, request so uh, generally um, this primitive is uh, when i mean this primitive is common when you are when you know that your queries are localized to a node um, or localized to a bunch of nodes uh, there is another primitive which is <coughs> very common in the aggregation um, 
the stats and the aggregation uh, infrastructure uh, pieces, which is the scatter gather primitive, which is uh, basically uh, saying that my data is going to be thrown across a bunch of these nodes because either it spans multiple, uh, I mean, it spans over a timeline or uh, my query is going to actually span across different facets. So I need to hit a large portion of my data, but uh, at the same time, I need to be able to uh, run computes on it and get back the results faster. So the scatter gather primitive is something that we support out of the box. Um, so these two are kind of, uh, so the way, the way you would think of this is that you would write your uh, application service and then you would kind of configure your application with uh, what kind of uh, routing and your application and, and other set of strategies that you get, right. Um, so we saw communication which is basically to say that uh, uh, who has what, which node in the cluster has what, right. Uh, now, uh, now coming to the routing or the starting part. So what decides, uh, what, what decides the fact that I am responsible for this chunk of data, right. So, uh, so this is, I mean, uh, we kind of started off building this consistent hash ring, uh, which would support routing and replication together because the, the data structure itself supports it out of the box for you. So we use a simple consistent hash ring. Uh, um, it, I mean, it's kind of well understood for a large set of people who are familiar with distributed systems. Uh, uh, and kind of understand how uh, routing works generally with uh, data systems. So, uh, so we have consistent hashing out of the box, but if you want a total ordered uh, partitioner or some other form of partitioner or a router, you could, or a metadata based router or whatever that is, if you're going to build a master space thing, then you could always plug in your router and then uh, kind of take it from there. Uh, the next, the next component or the next primitive that we support is membership. Like I said, uh, you could bootstrap your application saying that these are the five uh, nodes that are part of the cluster and uh, they would understand each other and they would be able to talk to each other <coughs> or you could actually have a little bit uh, more dynamism with respect to your uh, membership and you could you could use uh, dynamic membership. Uh, I mean, we have color coded it. The dynamic membership is under testing. We're using Atomics um, or swim, I mean, playing, basically playing with both right now, which uses raft underneath for consensus. Uh, atomics uses raft underneath for consensus. So, uh, we, we are, we are uh, I mean, we are kind of moving towards uh, dynamic membership so that uh, it helps a lot of us to kind of uh, get started by not having to do uh, some of this stuff and it also helps in environments where uh, your machines come up and go down, uh, especially when you have these orchestrated environments like Mesos and Marathon. So, uh, <coughs> that's on, that's on membership. Uh, as for the replication, um, I think one of the most critical things with respect to replication is calling it done. Uh, you really need to know when it is done. Uh, is it is it done when you write it locally or is it done when you have made the call to the remote machine or is it done when the remote machine actually writes it to disk. And at every level you have different trade-offs. Uh, right now what we support is a serialized synchronous replication. What that means is I write to disk and then if there is another replica, that replica write uh, to disk is successful only then the entire write is complete. Right? So uh, this of course has this overhead of latency. Uh, for your request, but uh, this is a call that we took because we, for us, uh, redundancy of data is more important than uh, kind of moving towards this eventual consistent model. Uh, so you, I mean, we also support asynchronous uh, replication. This is again under testing. Uh, uh, we don't, I mean, right now we are not uh, having the kind of space to test out uh, uh, this this mode of replication right now. But hopefully, I mean, we will be able to do that and kind of release it. Uh, this is kind of an optional thing. It's not part of uh, the, the standard distributed system, but we realize that for most of our tasks, we use uh, state. Uh, one way or the other, we use state, we rely on state. And um, uh, across across index, we realize that RocksDB is something that uh, we are getting very comfortable with. And and the performance and the benefits that we got, get out of it seems to be uh, much better than the other uh, the other data stores, the embedded stores that we use. So we, we provide support for embedded uh, KV, uh, which is a RocksDB implementation right now. And uh, of course, you can you can kind of build your own uh, DB abstraction underneath. Right. So uh, at a high level, this is uh, these are the various uh, primitives and, and the support uh, that you get uh, from Suchi. Uh, now uh, all this is fine. How do I get started? Right. So uh, I mean, uh, I spoke about the communication layer, and uh, I don't know if I kind of touched on it a little bit more deeply. So we use gRPC for communication. Uh, how many of you are aware of gRPC? So, uh, so I mean, uh, gRPC uses protobuf underneath. Uh, uh, you you could define your messages in protobuf, and you can write your service steps specs in protobuf. 
uh, we generate, you get the generated stubs. All as an application developer you need to do is uh, fill in those stubs with whatever business logic you need, and then wire it in into the Suchi server abstraction. So uh, the server abstraction comes up with a default routing strategy and a replication strategy, and your services are wired up. That way, when you bootstrap your service, you know that who are the peers and uh, what are the services or the functionalities that you're supporting. So when I say a service, you're basically talking of a function. Right? So uh, yeah, I'm going to just, uh, I mean, uh, the server abstraction basically, in, I mean, uh, wraps up uh, your uh, uh, membership, your router, and your replication. That's that's pretty much your server abstraction. Uh, and each of these is again pluggable. You could you can implement your own uh, of all of these, right? So uh, this is this is what we kind of uh, came up with. And uh, with this set of abstractions, we were able to accomplish a bunch of things that at least a couple of systems are, are running in production with this set of abstractions. And, and we realized that it's kind of uh, flexible enough for us to kind of work with. Um, so, at index. So, uh, what we have is we have uh, two systems which are in production, which are handling live traffic. We have an HTML archiver uh, which uh, which is responsible for uh, doing some compute on top of the HTMLs that we receive and index them internally, uh, provide time series based queries on it, and uh, provide pointed lookups on it. So, uh, this this we are able to do. This is a write heavy system. Every payload is close to, um, I mean, I would say 300 to 400 KB uh, uncompressed. Uh, if you compress it, it's, it's different. So, uh, uh, so that's that's a right payload that is taking, and uh, we have uh, a, a five to seven node cluster, if I remember right, uh, uh, handling close to terabytes of data, uh, uh, handling hundreds of transactions per second just on writes. The read side, we have um, we have actually built internal MapReduce adapters, which we use to scan uh, from this index, uh, and we also built a real-time stats aggregation uh, system based on Suchi. Uh, what this meant was. Uh, 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 we were able to push stats live and get these rollups done uh, with with this with the system. So uh, my my favorite uh, 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 implementation for Suchi has been the stats because uh, it kind of in, it kind of captures the essence of uh, doing computes as well as storing data internally, uh, having localized data as well as uh, doing distributed processing for your stats. Uh, and we use uh, we use cat gather primitives wherever we need within Suchi to actually roll out the compute across multiple nodes, crunch the numbers, whatever we want there, get localized results, and the guy who actually initially received the request does one more round of processing and pushes it out. So, uh, so we, I mean, we have kind of uh, set up this system in production and we are, I, I think, two teams at Index internally are pushing stats uh, to this infrastructure right now. And uh, we haven't tested it out exhaustively to understand if it's able to hand millions of events or not, but for whatever the scale, roughly, um, uh, 50 to 100 million events we are able to handle per day. That's something that I know, but how much it can take, we haven't tested. So uh, uh, that's that's on that. The third system that is being uh, kind of built, that is in progress, we kind of testing it out in a smaller uh, environment and all that is our uh, real-time scheduler, which involves uh, uh, rescheduling of URLs dynamically, which also involves uh, data local operations plus data storage plus a global view of the the index. So uh, this is something that uh, that we are kind of uh, in the work. It's, it's work in progress. It's going to be I mean, a couple of months. It will be in production. So uh, so that's that's pretty much what uh, what Suchi provides you. I'll actually show you some code uh, that will help you understand, let's say, how simple it is to kind of get started with a distributed system. So uh, yeah. So this is the proto definition that I spoke about. Are you guys able to see it in the back? Visible now? Okay. Is it visible now? Okay.
better. Okay. So um, I mean, this is this is basically a service definition that I spoke about. You kind of define your service uh, you as a product of uh, uh, service spec. Um, I kind of define a read service which basically uh, gets. I mean, it it passes in a get request and then it gets back a get response. And you've defined what how the get request looks like. Uh, this is just a, a example of a simple key distributed key value store. Right? So uh, and the basic operations that are supported are get input. Right? Now, uh, if I have to actually go to the service implementation, which is the read service, um, you you get some of these. Uh, I mean, your implementation of get actually uh, gives you a response observer that is the gRPC implementation of the stream uh, from which you got the uh, and the so you kind of use uh, the get request, uh, the, uh, the message that you get as part of your request and then use the, uh, the stream response uh, instance that you get to uh, send back a response uh, once, once you're done with your local processing. Right? Similarly, the, similar is the case with put request. In this case, we are actually storing the data into a data store. And uh, the cool part is with, with your, uh, I mean with this, just your uh, two read and write uh, servers, I mean the service definitions, what you have is you have basically Built up a distributed server by just doing this, right? So I create a, a server abstraction with a Netty server, which is basically the transport. Uh, I'm kind of defining the routing for the read servers using the routing strategy. In this case, it's a consistent hash ring, and I'm defining that I need to do parallel application. And um, we've also added a scan service, and I will get some. It's just a demo, but essentially, you kind of for every service you can define your router, and then uh, things things could go. So uh, that's that's pretty much on uh, how to get your basic distributed uh, service going with Suchi. Uh, any questions? We have about two minutes for questions, so there's probably time for one. If someone has a question, please raise your hand, and we'll get you a microphone. Do I see a hand? Aha, I see a hand right up here. Pick up my microphone. So Sridham, I, I can relate to some of the capabilities which obviously have done good amount of deep work on that, right? I think today when I look at this, this is, I would place it similar to what I see in Zookeeper okay. as a set of capabilities, but somebody went and defined a set of recipes that you can build on top. Right. Right. What I think would help for Suchi is to maybe define a bunch of recipes okay. so that to see if someone is trying to build distributed infrastructure, right. what are the kind of systems that this would actually be more suitable for sure. So for me right now, you don't have to, I have to answer that now, but I'm finding it hard to figure out. So obviously you used it very effectively in index, right. but outside of index, if someone were to use it, right. what would that be for? What class of problems? Okay. So maybe those recipes would help. Right. Okay. We, have, we actually made some documentation on that. I would, uh, the distributed key value store is a very vanilla example of what we could do. Uh, uh, we have also, I mean, we could, we could actually go deeper into this and then kind of talk about what are the various scenarios where or use cases in the real world that we could apply or build Suchi with. One of the things is just a distributed key value store. The other thing is a distributed stats aggregation system. If you had a requirement like this, you could probably use Suchi. So we have kind of put up a couple of recipes, but we would kind of definitely add more to it and then, and then see if, if it kind of caters to a wider audience. Thank you. Thank you, Sriram, for the interesting talk and for creating Suchi. Thank you. I'd like to make one final call for flash talks. If you're interested in giving a flash talk today, five minute talk, um, they are starting at 5.10 and you need to give your name, phone number, and the topic of your talk to this man. Um, come down and do that right now. Also, if you did not already turn in the